Hello, welcome or welcome back to Sapling Tarot. My name is Imogen and today I'm so excited because <laughs> I finally get to do one of these mid-year tarot tags that Chanel converted over from booktube. Um, I always love watching other people's answers to these and um, I love the end of year ones as well but at the point I was at in like my YouTube journey uh, last December I wasn't really in a position to do this video so this is the first time that I've been able to do one of these videos that I love so much. So that was a much ramblier intro than this needed to be. Uh, this is a mid-year check-in of the decks I've been using, my tarot practice what not let's let's jump into the prompts so i am super indecisive hmm maybe not in, maybe indecisive isn't the right word i don't love <laughs> being made to choose like favorites um i've absolutely turned into my mother it used to drive me absolutely spare when i was a child that she couldn't just say like what her favourite colour was, or what her favourite film was, or even like her favourite bit of the film. Um, and she'd always be like, it depends what mood I'm in. And I would be like, mother, mother, just let me understand your tastes, tell me the things you love. <laughs> That's very dramatic, but it did used to drive me up the wall when I was a child. Um, and I've turned into that person. So <laughs> there are a couple of these that I've really struggled with choosing, and I need you to simply not hold me to them. I have picked ones that I like and that I love and I can't categorically say that anything is my favourite because that makes me feel bad for my decks. <laughs> and yeah, so I just need you to not hold me to these answers. All that being said, favourite deck I've used so far this year, including all of the other decks I've used so far this year that I also absolutely love, is out for yourself. <laughs> An absolute darling of corner of tarot tube in which I reside. Um, I talk about this deck all the time. Everyone talks about this deck all the time. It's a great deck. Um, I can absolutely understand how it could be super off-putting for people. Um, it is a tarot oracle deck. The images are kind of like they're beautiful and sort of a little bit kind of grisly. Um, they've got like the Thoth keywords on them, and then also these like little kind of oracle <laughs> statementy things. But it's like no other oracle deck that I've come across in like how punchy it is and kind of how prickly it is like this is the furthest thing from like a love and light oracle deck that i can imagine and you know there is a place for love and light and soft and cozy and comforting and i think oracle decks often fill that space in someone's life for that kind of reassurance and affirmation and there are tarot decks that do it this is not really one of those decks However, it is oddly comforting um, and every time I've used it, I've been really glad that I've used it and this one and another deck that's going to come up in a bit, it's like it's hard to not use it all the time because I've talked about this before but like one of my favourite things about a tarot deck is if it kind of builds on a system and I think that these little kind of oracle phrase things, like when I read with another deck, I like, I want to know what the oracle phrase would have been for that card. And so sometimes I'll just go and pull the same card out of this deck. Um, and yeah, it's kind of sinister. It's a bit like prickly, but I, I've really valued every reading, whether it's been just like a quick card pull or like a big elaborate reading with questions, with prompts, without whatever, it, 
it's just all been really great. So prompt number one, favourite deck I've used so far this year, I'm going to say the Outgrow Yourself Terror and Oracle by Atkus Barman. Okay, so prompt number two is a new deck this year. And this is not a new deck, but it's new to me. Um, and this is the Voyager Tarot. Um, I can't remember your man's name who made it. Um, but this is a weird 80s, I want to say. James Wanless. And this is from 1998. It's nearly as old as I am. Um, so it was a second hand deck. It's a, you know, it's an old deck. It's 25 years old. <laughs> oh, we're not going to talk about how long that maths took me. Um, it is a weird, weird collage deck um, with this kind of like sort of horrible pastel neon kind of beigey greeny thing going on on the borders um but the images are just so evocative and they make sense to me in a very weird way <laughs> um where it's like you look at them and it just looks super chaotic and then just suddenly it all like clicks into place um so yeah this was part of a like a job loss of tarot decks on ebay and i'm really pleased i have it i haven't really had an awful lot of chance to use it as like a tarot deck for readings um as you can probably tell it's like in the same like it's in order um it reminds me quite a lot of the ritual tarot but i think that's because it uses some of the same, like, what do you call it, like public domain images. And obviously it's, you know, collage, but this is, I mean, I would assume very early, like digital collage um, rather than analog. And yeah, it just, it like, it speaks to me. I quite like the keywords on it. Um, it feels very like time and place but without being horrifically like problematic, which is quite nice. I think it works quite well for me in my practice because my first ever deck is like of a similar era and they like speak really well together. Um, so yeah, this is the new deck this year to me. Voyager Tarot by James Wanless. Oh, and I've only got like the Diddy, the little guidebook, but I would quite like to find a copy of the like proper big one. Okay, most anticipated deck. I know that I am not alone in this. Uh, my story is a little bit different though because, well, my pick is The Gay Marseille by Charlie Claire Burgess. I did not back this on Kickstarter. I've only very recently got back into Kickstarter. Uh, that's what I've been like saving my pennies up for. Um, but I missed this when it was on Kickstarter. Therefore, I pre-ordered it from Little Red Tarot, which is the UK stockist. And it's been like a real saga <laughs> getting it, which is not uh, Charlie Claire Burgess's fault. It's not uh, Beth Maiden and Little Red Tarot's fault. It's just sometimes postal shit happens. So this deck is so well travelled now. It's far less travelled than I am. It's been all over the Atlantic. It's been backwards and forwards all over the place. Um, and it, I'm just so glad that it made the journey to me eventually. Um, I do want to keep this there. Um, it's the most marvellous deck. I'm so grateful to have it. I'm so grateful that it finally made it and that everyone stuck it out and we, we got there in the end. Um, the colour palette is incredible and Kelly Bear made me a pouch especially for it with like absolutely spot on 
colours so we've got like the mint and the pink and the blue just absolutely perfect and this pouch has just been like sitting there patiently waiting for the deck to go into it um, and then I couldn't even bring myself to not use the tuck box because the tuck box is really cute so it's in a box in a pouch and then it came with a little bag so it could even be in a box in a pouch in a bag um, but that would maybe be excessive um, but it's so gay obviously <laughs> it's so queer there's so much of the queer experience contained in these cards it's really lovely to see like there's a whole bunch of versions of the Smith Waite out there now um, for all sorts of interests and kind of all sorts of lives and representation and stuff it's so cool to see that in a Marseille deck and in like any of the more kind of like classic original tarot configurations um, like I suppose it would be really cool to see like a queer sauce if that's available please like let me know I want to I wanna know all about it it would be cool to see like cool Italian style decks cool Italian style queer Italian style decks um but yeah I'm thrilled to have this in my collection I'm still a bit patchy on reading with Marseille but this is absolutely the thing that's gonna like push me to do <laughs> like proper Marseille study and I just think it's delightful and gorgeous and I've just realised I've still got like the duplicate cards in there how would you choose no I, I mean that's a job for another day maybe I'll just leave them both in there and fuck up the statistics um but yeah so most anticipated deck of the year is the game Marseille and I'm very very grateful to have this in my collection Okay, so the next prompt is biggest disappointment and this was kind of hard until I hit on something that I could count as a disappointment um, because thankfully I have finally got a much better sense of the decks that I like. So definitely this year, if not even like most of last year, I've generally only bought decks or pursued decks that I've been like genuinely thrilled to have. Um, the only kind of exception to this is The Oracle of the Roses uh, by Sheridan Darcy and this is mostly a cardstock issue if I'm honest. Um, I think it's a really beautiful deck, I think it's really cool that like there was more thought put into actually the choosing of the roses um for the cards than other decks that I've seen as like similar things where they you just kind of chose choose them because they're pretty. Um there is a thing where like some of the keywords like the archetype because it's kind of an archetype deck but then some of them are repeated and like that's a bit confusing. Um but yeah this is like a cardstock issue. It's so stiff. Like I don't, it's like really hard to to show how how. But like I'm properly like pressing on it now, and it's too big for me to hold like vertically in my hands to shuffle properly. Really, oh, of course now it's gonna like do it fine, but it's yeah it's just really stiff. Um, that you could never riffle shuffle this it would just be the most like clonking of stuff the edges are really sharp um like the can you see I don't know how well this is the kind of thing that will show up but they're really thick and then where the gilding or like, the edging is on it is like it's a really sharp edge <laughs> um I sound like such a wuss but I find shuffling this really difficult and like it's already chipping even though I don't I don't use it all that often but I am holding on to it because as yet I don't have a replacement for it that works as well for the love and romance readings that I offer that I do really like having an oracle deck in with and this works so well 
um, that I would be sad to get rid of it, even though I don't really use it for anything else. Um, but they work so well, and they work so well because I use them with the um, the Goddess of Love tarot by Gabriella Herstic, and the colours all work really beautifully. And obviously, you know, roses are a very like florals for spring, groundbreaking kind of thing to do for a love reading, but there is quite a lot of depth. And I really like that they're real roses and I've grown up around roses and I know quite a lot about roses in terms of not even like the symbolism but like their history and stuff so they make quite a lot of sense to me for an archety archetype deck but yeah I really struggle with the actual like kind of manufacturing element to it. So that's my anything. In terms of disappointments, <laughs> that's absolutely fine. <laughs> like that's absolutely fine. Um, I think about like when I was first starting, kind of dabbling in buying more tarot decks and stuff, and like some of the some of the things that I ended up picking up and being like, oh god, no, this is so far away from what I want or what I need or my taste or anything like that. So I'm absolutely fine with just some slightly dodgy cardstock being the biggest complaint I have so far this year. Uh, biggest surprise. Biggest surprise goes to um, another like weird <laughs> deck. This is the, uh, the Kantiji Oracle. I don't know where I saw this. I, this is my favourite card. I've talked about this before. Um, I cannot remember whose channel I saw this on and it really annoys me. <laughs> I have never seen it since. Um, I don't know who has this. If you have this, let me know, please, because I cannot remember um, where I saw this for the first time and then I found it on eBay and it's so weird it's so fun but in like a strange way and some of it's kind of silly and then some of it's like really deep <laughs> and it's just been an absolute revelation like some of it's so dark <laughs> and some of it's so silly um but like the book is really good and it's like every, I think there's 52 cards and they're all aligned with a week of the year going from the winter solstice all the way back round. Um, and it's such a lovely kind of narrative to look at the year through. And it's, I think they describe it as like an ecological oracle, which is like so cool and something that I could do with learning more about. And there's like for every card, there's like activities and kind of philosophy and ecological stuff. And it's just like such a project. It's so cool. I've never seen anything about it. I've never seen anything about it since. Um, I need to like track down the creators and stuff to see if they've done other things or if I can just like follow them on stuff because it's so interesting and so weird. Um, and I mean weird in the most complimentary sense. <laughs> like, it's... But yeah, some of it's really kind of poignant. And then I think that might be like the summer solstice, that would make sense. 27 is kind of... So we're not... yeah, we're a bit further on from there. But it's just... it's just gorgeous. And I use it way more than even, like, I thought I would when I saw it. And it's mass market. It was, I think I got it for like 15 quid. Um, no, I mean, I've got it in my head that it was like 11 or 12 quid. So, and it's like, it's like weirdly impactful. Um, and kind of beautiful. But yeah, I, this was a huge surprise, but like the best possible kind of surprise because, um, yeah, just, gorgeous um and so silly i love a bit of a silly deck like not kind of pure comedy that's kind of like awkward and embarrassing but yeah yeah 
big fan of the TG Oracle. Okay, prompt number six, deck crush slash love. Um, again, this is like, which deck do I love? All of them, all of the decks. I love all of the decks. But this was the one that was like up against Outgrow Yourself, your favourite deck that I've used so far this year. Um, but this is like a more recent love affair. And so that's why I put it in crush because where are we now? We're in July. I use this solidly for Gemini season and June and have fallen head over heels. Um, this is going to come up in I want to do Sylvie's Tarot Magpies Tarotmance tropes or Tarotmance uh, tropes and video and I'll say all of this all over again. What a treat for you if you watch both videos. Um, but I love this video, this video, fuck's sake, I love this deck at first sight, love the artwork, I desperately want the Reclaim Oracle, um, but absolutely understand why it's taking a while to come back round to being like reprinted and because I know they wanted to make a new edition of it and, you know, all sorts of awful stuff has happened in the creator's life and so this is not me being like, where's my deck? grumpy 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 you should not be a human <laughs> but just I think that it's a genius concept and I only really came across it after it sort of like stopped being available um or was it that I saw that they were going to re-release it with like different words so I thought I would hold out I think that was it either way this is not me being a bitch about it it's, it's just true facts that I'm obsessed with that concept and I saw this and I thought that it's just so gorgeous and so weird and I think as we've established I love beautiful and weird <laughs> it's like my favorite combo um and yeah I saw I can't even remember whose channel I saw this one it could well have been Sylvie's actually now that I mention it um but and then I didn't I didn't use it right away I think I got it like either at the very very beginning of the year or the very tail end of last year I think they were maybe having a sale I can't remember um but I bought it and was like immediately very pleased that I had I didn't feel like oh god what had I done you know spending all my Christmas money on on this deck um I was just like yeah that was a good that was a good choice um and then I didn't use it loads for the beginning part of this year and then Gemini season came around and this to me is a Gemini deck. <laughs> um, I think it's, like, it's the duality of the Lilith and Lucifer thing. It's... Yeah, I talked about it in my like Tarot My Child video, but it makes a lot of sense to me for some reason. I, I can't fully explain why. Um, and yes, I'm still trying. But anyway, to me this is a Gemini deck, so I pulled it up for Gemini season back in May and holy smokes I've never done so many readings because I just wanted to pick the deck up over and over and over and over again in June I did a full like 30 day tarot challenge which I don't think I've ever completed before just because I wanted to keep using this deck um I was just pulling cards for all sorts of things I was just getting the deck out to look at it um yeah just absolutely infatuated and I used it one of the most recent times I used it was for my solar return spread um, and I think I mentioned in that video that like I was already getting separation anxiety like the idea of putting it back in the box and putting it back in in my tarot stash was making me feel sad which is absolutely absurd because it's just some card uh, but it's some card that really speaks to me and that I'm very, very grateful to have in my life. Um, and, you know, I personify my decks and, you know, they are little persons to me and stuff. And this person has become, like, you know, we're getting towards sort of like soulmate territory at this point, which is balmy. Um, but I love it. I love it so much. So, yeah, this is my current but probably long-standing deck crush slash 
Love is the Lilitha Tarot by Marion Constantine of Little Darkness. Um, yeah, what a belter of a deck. Oh, and the bags. The bags are so beautiful and like everything about the presentation is just spot on. Apart from the slightly like frictiony cardstock. But I've even like come around to that in that way of you know you fall in love with someone and you can't even see their imperfections anymore. <sighs> okay, so I've got the old list. Um, but then I've also annotated it with the things that Chanel has changed this year. So this is prompt number seven, which is the deck that made you cry or a favourite card. And unfortunately, the answer for these is uh, the same. And now we're going to have a moment because I forgot to pull the specific card out. So please hold caller. Right. OK, this is the Herb Crafters Tarot. You may have seen me paint this kind of ugly bag. Um, I use this for Taurus season and I loved every bit of it. So, story time with this card is I I like to get a little bit witchy. I don't have like a very defined, I don't have a very like defined witchcraft practice. Um, I'm a low energy creature. I'm very chill about these kinds of things. Um, in terms of things like spirit communication, ancestors, etc. It's not something I'd really considered or dabbled in. Uh, it sounded like something that would take a lot of energy. And also I'm like, I'm still unpacking and unlearning and untangling myself from a lifetime of excessively like rational, logical, scientific um, prioritization. I suppose, and like the stuffing down of the intuitive and the emotional and the spiritual and so like I'm still doing a lot of that so I think that to try and leap straight into I don't know like full woo would be a lot would be a lot for me. However, I was watching one of Isha the Activist Witch's videos about ancestor work, uh, particularly using the book Ancestral Tarot by, I want to say Nancy Hendricks, but I could be making that up. Um, and I realised that I have that on ebook because I keep an eye on Humble Bundle and they do witchcraft book bundles every now and again. Um, and I've got some amazing titles through that. A fucking side note. And so I said, okay, well, I'll pull that book out. You know, it's not, it's not going to cost me anything to pull that out. And um, I was using this deck, uh, which I really enjoy. I think the kind of uh, almost photorealist pencil artwork is incredibly cool. Like, it's just the details are just extraordinary that those are pieces of artwork. Um, I've talked about it before, but like, the people who made this deck are from like a totally other continent than I am, so I didn't really expect there to be tons of plants that I would be super familiar with, but there may be equivalences or like similar things um and I've been doing herbalism training for I mean over a year now so I thought like maybe it would be that was mostly why I bought the deck for just like learning about herbs and stuff around the world I didn't think it was necessarily going to be like a spiritual emotional whatever thing um but it was the deck I was using so I pulled it out and I did like the first spread in the book which was to do with like effectively so you want to do ancestor work and it was talking about like do a spread where well, it was a spread to help you figure out which ancestors to focus on so whether it was your kind of your blood ancestors the ancestors of like the land that you live on or I can't think what the what the third group would have been but there was definitely a third group and do I have it? I've got my tarot journal right here. Why am I not referencing this? Uh, time. Okay, so it was ancestors of blood, ancestors of place, ancestors of time. I can't remember what time would be. Um, but I was thinking that if I was going to, then I would want to work with place because um, I'm relatively new to the area, but I've already felt very, very much at home here and 
at this point I didn't realise that I actually had blood ancestors from this area. That was that came that came later, but I was feeling very like connected to the place and still do feel very connected to the place. Um and so I thought that, that would be the avenue to go down, but I thought I'd do the spread anyway, and I was looking at Ancestors of Blood, and this card came up, and my family name has uh, a lot to do with oak trees, and it blew my absolute mind, because that's a line of my family that I have struggled with um, in the past. There are other avenues of my family that I maybe would have felt like more confident and comfortable you know, following off down that path and then turning over this card and I turned it over with Peach, which isn't the next card. Can I? Let me find the other card that it came up with. Yeah, this one. Okay, so and it was this idea of like emotional nourishment and it just, you know, when tarot does its thing and then when it does the spooky thing of it pulls something that is so hyper specific that I hadn't clocked was in this deck. I hadn't thought kind of, oh, how funny that that card's in there or whatever. But then this turns up when I'm talking about my blood ancestors it was just and like things have been on sort of like like I've been on a healing journey. And so the idea that like this avenue is kind of open to be, me now in a way that I wouldn't have been in a position to do this. I mean, even like a year or two ago um it was just fucking wild and just when tarot does that thing and so yeah a favorite card or a deck that made you cry this deck made me cry this is my favorite card because holy smokes tarot how do you like it was so uncanny to the point where i was almost like for a fraction of a second convinced that this wasn't actually even a card in the deck and that this had just kind of like magically appeared but yeah seven of earth you know seven of pentacles the idea of you know planting acorns and from which you know big big mighty oak grow and all of that kind of thing was kind of not like a superfluous thing but it was like the symbolism of like the specific tree and then this idea of like nine of cups and this like emotional nourishment and dreams and like I couldn't even have imagined a few years ago that I'd be in a place where I could work with this energy and um as may well surprise uh, none of you i have not touched any ancestor stuff ever since because as beautiful as that moment was it was absolutely terrifying um, so i will come back to it i will and maybe the herb crafters is now my ancestor work deck if i'm gonna become a person who has an ancestor work deck um but yeah i mean that made me cry or it certainly made me teary, I can't remember if it actually made me like fully blub, but um, yeah, I mean, where are we? Tarot is ridiculous. Um, okay, prompt number eight, deck that made you happy. All of my decks make me happy. <laughs> it's why I have them, it's why I collect them. I, it's, it, it is, <laughs> it is part of why we're here. Um, yeah, certainly it's why I make YouTube videos. Um, this deck makes me laugh. And so that's like the extent, the extension of um, the question or the prompt to me is they all make me happy. This one makes me laugh out loud. Um, it's so silly. I think it's pretty beautiful, but I think it is just the sense of humour of this artist, uh, Zeppelin Moon, is so just silly. But in like a nice way and in sometimes like quite an oddly poignant way and um yeah i just it makes me <laughs> i don't know why i find this so funny i don't know why it makes me so happy but it really does um and yeah it's a pretty straightforward answer i guess um i recently did a flip through of the tarot deck by the same creator um in which i <laughs> was just like you know this is basically just a massive oracle deck um but this i think the oracle deck is my preference because it doesn't shy away so much from like some of the trickier trickier feelings 
um, and it just, yeah, yeah, I think it's great. And I leave you uh, with this for this deck. Dear heart, may you find a treat, a rest, a little luck along your way today. And that is what I wish for you. Okay, and so we get on to deck number nine, which has my angriest notes. It's deck number nine, the most beautiful deck. And my notes say, you can't make me. Um, yeah, I truly cannot come up with an answer for this one. I'm really sorry, I know it's such a cop out. I think all my decks are beautiful in their own special ways. Um, I would be the most irritating parent. Um, I think all sorts of things are beautiful and really cannot make myself <laughs> pick a particular kind of beauty to showcase. And like, I really know it's not that deep. I really know that. I still cannot seem to make myself. Like some of these other ones were like hard enough to pull out a deck. So. I'm really sorry, I don't have an answer for that one. I think all my decks are beautiful. <laughs> um, all cards are beautiful, etc. Um, so, yeah, I am going to skip that one. I'm really, really sorry. Okay, de uh, prompt number 10. What deck do you want by the end of the year? Or what deck are you waiting on? I'm going to stick to tarot. Um, although, Kickstarter-wise, I have back two Oracle decks. Um, but the tarot deck that I have pre-ordered is the Heartwood Tarot by Three Trees Tarot, um, which I am so excited for. I love that little mouse, I love their little adventures, I think it's so clever. Um, I really love the Three Trees art, I cannot remember the artist's name off the top of my head, which I feel really bad about. Um, I have the Thistledown Oracle, which is just beautiful, it's like a warm hug, but I really have to be in the right frame of mind to be able to take it, much like a warm hug, in fairness, because I think sometimes I would be too fragile and it would break me, and other times it would just kind of almost irritate me, um, because I'm just like, I need action, I need a plan, um, because I'm an arsehole, but it's a really beautiful deck. The tarot decks that they've made I think are stunning, they don't necessarily speak to me on like a tarot level, however the Heartwood does. I really think it does. Um, I love everything about the business and all of their like eco credentials and stuff and I'm absolutely buzzing to have a tarot deck from them in my collection and to have that little mouse be my friend. Which deck hasn't been used this year but you want to tarot del fuego? I don't know how I haven't used this. Uh, this was like an amazing eBay find. I think I got it for like a fiver or something and it's just how it's really like an ex-boyfriend of mine. I've never clocked that before. That's so weird. Um, it's still in order. It's um, from like checking that all the cards are there. It's so much fun. I don't know why I haven't pulled it out. This is going to be my Leo deck. I've been wondering what my Leo deck was going to be. This is going to be my Leo deck. I'm absolutely buzzing for that. That's so exciting. Great. This tag is brilliant for so many reasons. <laughs> the Hermit is so difficult to see. It's like, it feels very, um, like Homer disappearing into a bush. Um, yeah, buzzing for that. Thrilled. You've probably seen it before. These decks are everywhere and yet kind of underrated. Um, yeah, I love the tattoos. I love that they cut the tattoos make me think that they're kind of like Viking. But then the Del Fuego makes me think like Spanish. Do I mean Spanish? I hope I do. But yeah, I just think it's like, it's dark, it's twisty, it's fun, very cool devil, excellent tower. Yeah, badass, love it. Oh, I'm thrilled, that is very exciting. <laughs> Genuinely been like, I'm not gonna say so much as worrying about what deck I was gonna use for Leo, but was kind of frustrated that it hasn't just kind of like come to me. Excellent. And then final prompt, fave video you've made so far this year. Um, I'm just really pleased that I've made any videos so far this year. Um, I started my channel, I started my channel back in October 2023 with the intention of a video every two weeks. Um, I think I did that for October, November 
And then December I tried the 12 Days of Yule videos, um, which kind of got me more into the swing of it. And then since January, I've pretty much uploaded every week, sometimes even twice a week, like consistently, and then sometimes even three times a week. And I am absolutely blown away by the fact that I've done that. Um, I'm weirdly proud of myself for sticking with it um, and for being consistent, which would have been something completely out of my grasp a few years ago. Um, in terms of energy levels, in terms of motivation, in terms of, I mean, a whole bunch of things. So the fact that I've consistently been uploading for six months now is wild to me. Um, so, I mean, yeah, all of them. <laughs> the videos you've made so far this year, all of them, because I'm amazed that I've made any. Um, but if I did have to pick one, I'd probably go for Tarot and Tism because it's been my most successful video so far and I'm really grateful to anyone who watched that um but also I really enjoyed doing the finding your cards video even though it was an absolute ball ache to find all <laughs> to uh, find all of the cards to do that and to like set everything up and then pack everything back down again was a pain in the bum but I was really pleased with it I thought I was quite clear <laughs> which isn't always a given with me and yeah like I've sort of started like a baby series of this like tarot and blank and I'm looking forward to maybe doing some more of these and like generally trying to the idea when I started the channel was to try and gear it more towards uh talking about tarot rather than just like sharing decks because I love watching deck videos I did not need to give myself any kind of like pseudo excuse to buy more decks and be like, oh, but it's for the YouTube channel. I didn't need that because it wouldn't be true. Um, it would just be because I want them. And so I've just really enjoyed trying to think around that. And I really enjoy doing these videos um, and participating in tags and involving myself in conversations and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to continue talking about like tarot and divination and stuff more broadly as well as looking at beautiful artwork and beautiful decks and playing with decks and talking to people about decks and all of that good stuff yeah so that was a very very long-winded answer and video oh we're nearly at 50 minutes i really hope for your sake that i managed to cut this down right i love you lots um if you enjoyed this uh you could maybe consider subscribing uh, so that you can see more videos like this and if you liked it you could also like the video i'm sorry for the very clunky outro thank you so much for watching i hope you're taking really good care of yourself and i will catch you in the next one bye